Welcome back. I'm Sam Hedden, and we have a very special guest for you today. He is an actor, writer, producer. He's currently running for state senator of Minnesota. And I'm very excited for you to get to know a little bit more about Leonard Searcy. Hi, Leonard. Thanks for joining me. Hey, Sam. Uh, thank you for having me. I know you're really busy because running for Senate, that's huge. So it's, it's one of the hardest things that I've had to do, you know, <laughs> and I'm a filmmaker. So <laughs> it's, it's right up there with filmmaking, you know. You started a business at the age of eight. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about, like, how that came to be you were super oh. young that was amazing oh yeah it was um uh, i grew up poor uh with uh like like nothing poor um i was born in what was called the projects here in minneapolis in uh, north minneapolis and um i remember you know um you know there's times where you know it just wasn't food and then learning the process of how to make money. It's like, oh, okay, you know what? I can, I can um, mow lawns. I can rake yards. I can shovel, you know, uh, things like that. So I ended up connecting with people in my community and putting a um, uh, kind of like a, a network of houses that I, you know, uh, that I took care of every, every week or every two weeks. So, you know, I, I was making a pretty decent amount of money uh, at that age and helping out at home and things like that. Yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. I, I bring my brother sometimes. He was, uh, uh, he would come with me. He never knocked on the door. <laughs> He'd always let me do that. I was, a, you know, I was the talker. And um, he, uh, you know, he would he would hardly work, you know, but he, he definitely get half the money. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's my older brother. By the time you got to 16, you were promoting music in the Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. How did you how did you get into that? Um, so the, the music part uh, started as poetry. Hmm. And, you know, you know, all the rappers were cool. <laughs> so I kind of, um, you know, made my poems into raps. And uh, I met a friend, uh, Michael Hanna, at, a, at an after school program. My, my part of the uh, program was called I Can You. And uh, we met there. It was my first time ever being in a studio. So, you know, I, I show up with a duffel bag full of like, papers with songs and uh, we start recording and I make a song for the first time and then uh, I find out Michael's um, performing so you know he wants to start a group and uh, so you know the next step was performing uh, together and then it was like okay how do we actually book these so once I found out how to do that um, Yes, you know, I started putting on my own events. Can you tell us a little bit, what's one of the biggest events you've ever had the chance to put together? Put together, it was a, it was a show called uh, Presence, and we did it at the Fine Line uh, Music Cafe, downtown Minneapolis. And it was packed, uh, we had celebrities come out, it was, um, it was just a whole lot of fun. Um, we had artists like Ashley DeBose, Michael Hanna, who goes by Mike Dreams. Uh, he was there. Uh, it, was a, um, it was a lot of really great artists on the bill um, who are now doing really great things. So, Do you ever, do you miss doing the concert promotion? Did you do it for a long time? I did it for a while. Um, do I miss it? You know, it's a skill that I'm able to, um, uh, I was able to transfer in the film, um, you know, because we got to sell our films, you know, we got to pack our, our theater shows, things like that. Right. Um, and now I'm sure I'm able to transfer it into what I'm doing here with, you know, uh, trying to get a turnout 
to the, the voting polls. So. so how, you went into acting, what was your aha moment where you're like, this is it, this is what I need to be doing? Um, uh, my mother passed away three years ago. And before she passed, uh, her and, and my father told me this, that this, that's what I, you know, that, that I'm good at it and I should do it. So, you know, I told her before she passed, okay, I'll do it. So after she passed, it was kind of like, okay, how do I do this? <laughs> you know, uh, there's a lot of support out there that I got. Um, I went to school, uh, Minneapolis College for acting. So I, you know, got my chops up there. And uh, um, I, I applied those same music uh, um, skills, you know, from a business standpoint to acting, you know, and to film. And they transferred perfectly, you know. So I ended up getting opportunities and, and films and TV shows, commercials, things like that. Uh, With so you've been in quite a few feature films and short films. A few of the features is The Great War, which people can find at Target, they can find all over right now. A lot of good boys are gonna die. A lot of good boys already have. Be my woman, girl, be a man. The platoon is cut off behind enemy lines. Be a man. some white man's war. Back home, all of our skin divides us. Out here, we're all one. You are all my brothers. Mm -hmm. And that was very locally made. Um, a lot of local people in that. Of all of the films that you've been in, which one has been your favorite? Like, which one was, like, the one that you were like, I, this has got to be one of my favorite things I've got to do? Uh, I did this documentary called, well, actually, it's between these two projects. One was a film called Black that's on Amazon now. Uh, it was directed and written by David J. Buchanan, a friend of mine. Um, it was, uh, it was an, an extraordinary film. Uh, it is so relevant to what's going on in the world right now. You know, there, there was, there was so much conflict in me, uh, with kind of, uh, how, how the guy was feeling and things like that. Um, just trying to figure out where his, where his own philosophy was. So once I got past that part, and, it, you know, I, I think it actually grew me a lot, helped me understand a lot of things about, about myself and things that are going on in the world. And then there's this documentary that I did uh, with Paul Ermitter. Uh, um, it's called 39 Seconds, and I play a, uh, a legendary Negro Leagues baseball player uh, named John Donaldson greatest picture no one ever heard of um, <laughs> and that'll actually be releasing later on this year you obviously do a lot between the writing the directing the producing you're if people were to look you up you also are very open that you have two young children mm -hmm. how do you balance everything you're doing including running for senate and being a dad like how does that work? That's a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. Uh, I have really great kids. Um, really, really great. Um, when it comes to my career, which, you know, I have to say now, like, I'm not as involved anymore. Um, after George Floyd was killed, uh, it sparked a conversation in the house asking my daughter and my son, how do they feel? Um, and my daughter told me that she didn't feel safe, mm. right? So initially my uh, instinct was to just go help, you know, help out, you know, as much as I can. So it was being in the street, 
helping people get resources that they needed, food, water, uh, uh, whatever it is that they needed. And then it was also at night, you know, helping the defense teams keep the streets t- uh, safe. Um, I moved to coordinating with the military and Minneapolis Police Department and street teams as well. Um, and then I got a call uh, saying that I came highly recommended to run for state senate seat. It was kind of, I had that moment of, okay, this is, this is what I can do to help. You know, this is what I could do to, to make sure my, my children feel safe. You know, make sure everybody's children feel safe. You said it's one of the most difficult things you've ever done. Can you give us, like, an example? Because obviously not everybody's going to get an experience like that in their lifetime to even run for Senate. Uh, why is it hard? Uh, so I'm on a crash course of, <laughs> of uh, politics in general. Uh I believe that we have uh, a real chance at changing things. Mm -hmm. And I got to make sure that I'm well equipped to be the person to do that. You know, if I'm asking people to vote for me, if I'm, you know, making promises, like one of the problems that we have, I think in politics is that uh, politicians talk too much. You know, we don't listen enough. Um, You know, I've always been a decent listener. I've always been a good listener, I think. And I think that that's, that's what we need right now. There's a lot of people who are outside who are trying to be heard. And we've seen in moments where um, the narratives, you know, get changed and um, uh, the media speaks for people. And that's not, that's not the America we're, we're trying to move into. We're trying to move into one where every voice matters, you know, where, um, where every, everyone matters, you know, and that's, and I know right now the movement is, is saying right now we have to uh, be able to recognize that Black Lives Matter um, as well. Hey, Pop, can I, can I get that light? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> yeah, that's my dad. Over here. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> it's really different when you're making decisions for everyone, right? Right. That, that affects everybody, right? Uh, when you're that person. So the kind of person that needs to be, um, I think is someone who, who has to, um, who has to give up their own self-interest, yeah. you know, if, if it doesn't align with every, you know, with the people who they represent. Um, uh, this is no longer about me. It's no longer just about uh, just about my people. This is um, this is about every Minnesotan. This is about uh, America. I think that the changes that we make here uh, can definitely set the tone for the rest of the country. So that's true. How can people find your campaign, and how can they vote for you? Um, so right now, if you live in District Forty Five, uh, those cities include uh, New Hope. Plymouth, Robbinsdale, Crystal, and Golden Valley. At voting right now, it doesn't take any time at all. Uh, register to vote, registering to vote takes uh, three, four minutes. Um, uh, registering for your absentee ballot takes three minutes. Uh, but the thing is, I'm a write-in, right? So uh, my last name is a little different. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> thirsty. Uh, S-E-A-R-C-Y. Um, so you got to spell the name correctly. I'm sure. Or that I'm vote sure. to count. They'll put on the screen your name so people can get a good spelling for it. So that way it counts. <laughs> on top of being running for Senate, writing, producing, acting, you're also a teacher. You, you mm-hmm. teach acting classes as well. Again, my focus right now is on... on change, you know, um, on keeping people safe, on, uh, you know, education, growing the economy, things like that. You know, I, I'm, you know, hopefully I can still make movies uh, in, in between. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. 
Uh, thank you, Sam, again for having me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm definitely willing to come back. Perfect. Well, so when you're a senator, I will give you a call and be like, hey, you said you'd come back now. So I, I, I'll definitely come back. Perfect. I'll definitely come back. Um, anybody who wants to reach out, ask any questions, get to know, uh, you know, what platforms, things like that. If you have any concerns, things that uh, you want addressed, uh, uh, I'm, I'm here to listen. Uh, I want to hear from you, uh, what you think, and, uh, and what you want. This has been Sam Hedden with producer Andy Watson, and now you know Leonard Searcy. <laughs> or you can do it your way first and then you can do it my way. Shut up. <clears throat>